almost in 12 months, Nintendo fans have been blessed with two new Zelda games, the phenomenal Twilight Princess and now Phantom Hourglass. It's truly a Zelda game with dungeons and boomerangs, but it's also different, being a direct sequel to Wind Waker, discarding the D-pad for complete stylus control, and streamlining some of Zelda's intricacies for more casual, portable play. So it's a Zelda game, but where does it sit within its prestigious pack? If you haven't played Wind Waker, be warned. The game opens by retelling the tale, ending and all. And with Phantom Hourglass being a direct sequel, it's fair, putting some context on the plate. Soon enough, a mysterious ghost ship appears. Tetra, leader of the band of merry pirates, is kidnapped, and Link is thrown overboard, to wash ashore in a not-so-sly wink at Link's awakening. Soon enough, you'll meet some colorful characters to help you find Tetra, not the least of which is Limebeck, a scallywag of the seas and captain of your new vessel. It's a lovable story that cribs the best characters from Wind Waker and a pinch of Pirates of the Caribbean as well. These sands of time pull from 2003, bringing the art style, maps, and high sea adventures from Link's last cel shaded adventure. And there's still that classic progression of overworld to town to dungeon. The overworld, four quadrants each dotted with islands, still house shops and people to talk to, secrets to unearth, and boulders to bomb. The dungeons are still chock full of puzzles, bad guys, keys, and items, but this time around, it's simplified. Believe it or not, most dungeons take 30 minutes or less to get through, then there's a simple, if imaginative, boss fight. Gone is the compass, and the map now is available on the top screen from the get-go. You can also jot down notes using the touchpad. The puzzles are like the bosses, fun but simple, and the dungeons are very linear. So don't worry about getting to a door, not having a key, and having to scour the entire game to find it. The exception is the Temple of the Ocean King, which you'll revisit multiple times throughout the game. This is where the Phantom Hourglass comes into play, as you're forced to complete the dungeon before time runs out. It's challenging and requires some mental agility, managing what to do next as well as avoiding lumbering giants as the clock ticks down. This is also where the multiplayer aspect draws from, allowing one player to control Link as the others control phantoms, drawing literal strategic lines trying to catch him before he brings gems back to his base. It's no four swords, but it's fun and tense. The simple dungeons are a bit of a letdown, but it's not until you march out with your treasures that you realize it was over way too quick. The quality is still there, just truncated to the essential bits. And while you may not miss the compass or upgrading your wallet, which can now hold thousands of rupees right off the bat, a bit of what makes Zelda sparkle is missing. You can acquire great amounts of wealth and spend it on cosmetic upgrades for your boat, but with a streamlined adventure and smaller world, there's not a lot going on after you beat the game, just picking up a few last treasure chests or dredging them up from the ocean. reservations about the stylus-based gameplay can be put to rest. The learning curve is non-existent, while some elements are improved, like plotting out a boomerang path to smack some moving rupee container upside the head. That said, a few of the other DS novelties return, like the microphone, which is fine if you're hanging out on the couch, but may raise an eyebrow if you're caught blowing into the mic at, say, jury duty. The touch tap combat is fun, but continuing the theme, pretty easy, even for a Zelda game. The shield works automatically, and few enemies are more than two blows away from defeat. The seafaring is improved from Wind Waker. With no troublesome baton, just chart your route on the map and you're off. Distances are shorter, warping is more readily available, and sea enemies play like whack-a-mole for the most part, keeping you amused on the short trips. Also, the seagulls explode. The game plays like gold, but the easiness factor creeps in again. If you do want a challenge, you can always rerun the Ocean King's Temple, going for a better time by ferreting out shortcuts, but this is far from ideal. <laughs> Hourglass does a great job of picking up Wind Waker's style and dropping it onto the dual screens. Zelda looks fine, the 3D effects are great and really shine in some of the boss battles. As with most 3D DS games, there are aliasing issues, especially in the cutscenes. But how many DS games are there where this is even worth mentioning? 
The music and sound effects are classic Zelda, remixing some tunes, begging for headphones and proper stereo. There's no denying that this is a great, if easy, game. But when you're talking about the upper echelons of the gaming pantheon, everything is held in another light. As portable entertainment, it's fantastic, proving an action-adventure can be done with a stylus with no qualms. The quickie dungeons and throttled exploration are outright disappointing, but when held up against the rest of the DS library, it's a great game. But it's just a good Zelda. Uh -huh. <laughs>